Welcome to this uh, second lecture in the second theme, Architecture Requirements in the 2DB604 Software Architecture course. Uh, this lecture gives you somewhat more detail about quality attribute scenarios, which is a, a specification technique for, for uh, uh, architecture uh, requirements uh, introduced in the course literature and promoted throughout the book. Uh, in the uh, previous uh, lecture of architectural requirements, we, we spent quite some time on figuring out what architectural requirements was. And architectural requirements is all about what. What the system should achieve. What the system should be. And uh, it's not just functionality, uh, requirements could also be different various uh, system qualities. And there is also quite a few constraints on how you can build a system. And a constraint can be anything from time, money, resources, etc. It can also be rules, regulations, law. Depends on, on the country the application uh, uh, but for instance if you if you uh, think about a, a software system for uh, a machine or a car uh, it's not okay to to build that any way you like there are binders full of regulating uh, regulatory text that that you have to take into account because that will guide you uh, how you can develop your system, how you verify it, how you test it, etc. So what can be much more than just the uh, expressions or wish lists from, from customers? But, but uh, in this lecture, we will look more into to quality attribute scenarios, which is an expression of how the system behaves that's the quality so if you think about what quality is well a quality quality can be many different things but uh, one of the things is how we perceive the system's behavior so if we think that the system behaves well we consider it to have good quality and quality attribute scenarios, they try to, to uh, use this to drive the specification of qualities. So a quality or concern or quality attribute, they use these uh, uh, term, terms interchangeable in, in the book, but think of it as system behavior. How the system behaves, that's the quality. So can't you express quality as system behavior? Well, with a quality attribute scenario, they uh, try to do this using six components. And the model is based on the following uh, foundation. You have a system that is currently operating in some environment. And then something stimulates the system. So the source of a stimulus sends a stimulus or stimulates the artifact which is situated in some environment. Okay, now this stimulus affects the system somehow, or the artifact somehow. Now the artifact or system should respond in some way, and if it responds like that, well, that is the expression of quality. So, 
quite easy to explain this using a basic example. Here's a, a quality attribute scenario depicted as uh, graphical elements. Here we have a, a source of the stimulus. Um, this is, uh, say, a user. Over here, we have a uh, web shop. And this web shop is running in an environment. And that environment is characterized that it by that it's uh, normal operation. So uh, there is really no problems. The, uh, sorry for that, but I, it's normal operation. So we have a user that operates on a web shop under running under normal conditions. And say that the uh, stimulus here is that the user initiates a transaction. Say that uh, in the web shop, the uh, user pushes the uh, buy button uh, and that stimulus on the web shop running under normal con conditions should say okay the transaction the purchase process here finishes within two seconds that's the response so if the user stimulates the system by initiating a transaction and the system is running operating under normal conditions well, then the response should be that the transaction finishes within two seconds. So, so this model actually can be used to ask the right questions. What can happen? When does it happen? What does the system look like? Or how does it behave uh, when this stimulus arrives and what should the response be so so it's more a model that that helps you to to structure your question to structure your specification there are even uh, more help for you because they provide something that is called general scenarios and these general scenarios well you can provide general scenarios for various quality attributes or various concerns. Uh, and that general scenario will give you a set of possible values for the source, for the stimulus, for the artifact, for the environment, for the response, and for the response measure. So you can actually combine the Sorry, you can combine the possible values into your quality attribute scenario. Like, you can select human as a source. Uh, you can uh, select access system services, where the... Uh, environment is uh, fully operational well then data or services are protected from unauthorized access so if we have an unauthorized human that uh, attempt to access a system service and the environment the system is running uh, in a normal operation mode well then the response should be that the data or services are protected and then you can express also uh, how much uh, or uh, uh, the type of well if they are protected well then it's like yes or no but but there are other types of responses where you can actually uh, measure certain aspects. 
So general scenarios gives you some input for, for deriving uh, concrete quality attribute scenarios. In this case, it's a general scenario for security. And of course, you use that for quality attribute scenarios for that concern. So, so uh, here's an example. You have a disgruntled employee from a remote location attempts to modify a pay. Uh, the environment runs, uh, so the system runs in normal operations. The artifact is some data within the system. Uh, but since the system maintains audit trails, you can actually find out if the disgruntled employee has attempted to modify a pay part in the data. So you can correct the data, you can restore it within a day, and you can also identify the source. So you can identify the, the disgruntled employee because you have the audit trails. So this is an example of, of uh, um, another uh, security QIS. So what are QIS useful for? Well, it can actually help both stakeholders and architects to identify concerns and also to some extent to express quality attribute scenarios. Uh, with the general scenarios, you give the options and with some guidance, you can actually assist stakeholders in specifying uh, quality attribute scenarios. Quality attribute scenarios is quite top heavy. It takes quite some time to, to uh, uh, dig out all quality requirements, all architecture requirements in a system using this technique, but you can use it for some, you can use it for important or prioritized quality attribute scenarios, but first and foremost, it's a technique that can help stakeholders to identify and specify their concerns. Okay, that was the um, second and last lecture on the second theme, architecture requirements. And um, now we move on to the third theme, which will be architecture documentation.